Hey, and welcome back to the Contents Profit Podcast. It's me, Luis. Today, I'm here by myself. And today, I had an incredible session in uh, the community with Dara Allred. And uh, she was a guest in the podcast a couple episodes ago, which she talks about the most powerful consumer on earth. So I re highly recommend go back to that episode and check it out. And she has this amazing community full of women and amazing entrepreneurs. And uh, they needed help a little bit with their publishing frameworks and uh, how to be consistent, how to monetize and all the stages. I was actually going through the recording earlier today and I was like, oh my gosh, there's a section there where we start the session and we get before the six stages of it, where we talk about the amazing opportunity that we have today based on historic facts in the, in the history of media. And also these amazing stats that are preventing a lot of people from executing. This first part of the conversation is where we dive deep into a, a framework that we call the publishing pyramid. And we give some examples for people to get unstuck and move things forward. What you're about to hear is that first part, the first 20 minutes of that section that we had with Sarah. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you take a lot of notes. I hope you can take action with this. Let me know in the comments. By the way, we're going to leave the links right in the description. All we're going to do is scroll down. If you want to go in there and receive their resources, all you got to do is click that link. We'll get that email and then we'll send the, the resources that we mentioned. There's a worksheet and there's a presentation as well that we can send you. And also we do have a program, but more on that later. Enjoy. We've got some hey, fresh new I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. You and you're listening before. to the Content One, is Profit two, Podcast. Three, I am so excited. Okay. <laughs> You're amazing. So I am going to really tell you, tell you really one important thing. These are my favorite people on earth that you are teaching who are spreading messages about family, about God, about life, about health, about finance, about just life changing topics. And so you are so critical being here today because we all, myself included, need help getting that message out there faster, more effectively, and not being scared to publish every day. And so let's go. Awesome. Host. Ready? Let's go. Let's What's go. Ready? <laughs> What's up, guys? Nice meeting you. Do we have time to go around a little bit? Maybe get to know each other. Damien, is that correct? Yeah. Did I say it right? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Kristen, nice to meet you. Michaela. Lori, is it Ember? Ember, the essay, right? I have a funny accent. So if you haven't noticed, I'm from Venezuela. I call it funny. My wife calls it sexy. It is what it is. Brittany, Meg, and Eric, nice, nice to see you all. Nice to see everybody in the Facebook group. But yeah, I'm super excited and honored. So thank you for having me in your group. We've had an amazing interview with you, which you taught us about the most powerful consumer on earth. And I'm like, oh my God, tell me more. Super stoked to, to be here and share our message. So I do have a presentation. I speak very fast. We have a lot of cover today, and the goal today is to show you what's possible and then bring it back to execution mode. Cool? Awesome. Okay. So there's going to be some resources that I mentioned in the presentation that I'm happy to share with every single one of you. There's a link in the chat that I just put in there. You want to click in there, put your email. As soon as we hop off, we go and we share all the resources. So it'll be the presentation and some things that we mentioned in there. So you don't have to like write everything down if you'd like to write things down. Perfect, but just opt in there and then we'll be following up with the things that we mentioned. Sometimes we go off the cuff. So be like, Luis, you told me that you were going to share this template. Perfect. Send it in my email and then I'll share that template as well. It's happened in the past where we're like, oh boy. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right. So just recently we were in this presentation. We ran part of this presentation at Podfest. It's like one of the biggest podcasting communities out there. We were in Orlando and the big work was absolutely positive. So I'm very stoked to share this with you. It's like our two main frameworks that we use. Who love frameworks? Raise your hand if you love frameworks. So you're like, yeah. Be like, no, Louise, that's too boring. I promise I'll make it super fun. I promise I'll make it super fun. But this is literally the two frameworks that we've used first to reach our first six figures just on publishing. And then second to make multiple six figures with this offering our service on the back end. Sorry, give me a little bit of background on your side of soil, like B2C. If you're B2B, this applies as well. But as we move forward, if you have questions, drop them in the chat and we'll be able to do that. So I did warn me that we have 45 minute chunks. So I play soccer. We have 45 minute halves. So what we'll do is we'll do a 45 minute half on this as fast as possible. And then any other questions and follow up as we see it fit. So do you guys see the whole presentation? I'm just going to leave it on this mode without too crazy, man. So cool. all right. So why, how, and what to publish? 
blueprint for monetizing your content out of overwhelm into momentum. Somebody, a little birdie told me that that's the saying, and I love it because fun fact, the backend service that we offer is called content momentum. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> so anyways, congratulations. Today's goal is how do we understand to build your business publishing habit, leverage it for revenue and commit to action. So when we decided to do this and commit to actual action is when we actually saw the results. So start thinking, right? Based on our resources, how can we take this into action today? So let me minimize this. Cool. I'm All right. So I'm going to interrupt you, Luis, already. Absolutely. You say business publishing habit and I'm like, oh yeah, I don't have that. I don't have that. <laughs> so I'm like, right time, right place. Like publishing is not a habit in my world right now. So I'm sure I'm not alone in that. This is exciting. Let's go. Yeah, we'll be sharing some fun things, but like the great philosopher Gary Vaynerchuk says, the biggest thing I can tell you is that you have to make as much content as possible. This was the message that I heard for three years without actually, before we even published our first piece of content in our company, three years. So raise your hand if you've heard this from not only the great philosopher, but also our coaches, our friends, or people are like, yeah, okay, cool. So more content, more brand, it's how you grow, publish. That's basically what we heard every single time. Just go ahead and put some content out there. So again, put this for obviously everybody in the room, but if you're looking to build a publishing system as solid as the rock, you want to have a long-term sustainable success rather than just a quick win. We were those guys that were chasing the quick win. We started with bro marketers. My brother was like watching Lambos in Instagram. It's like, I want that. We now drive Jeep Wranglers and have kids and all that stuff. So anyways, we were looking for that quick win and we suddenly realized that's not how things work, right? So here's a timely timeline that shows today's huge opportunity. In 1704, we had the first newspaper ad, right? 1800s to 1920. We have the rise of ad agencies, magazines, newspapers. So this distribution channel starts to come alive. 1938, radio ad revenue increases and surpasses magazine ad revenue, right? On 41, we have the first TV ad. On 91, we have the rise of TV ad. But on 91, the interwebs, the WWWs go live. And then 94, the first banner ad actually comes alive, right? So 94 till now, it's like the land of opportunity to put our message out there. There's so much opportunity, so much out there, right? But it can also be very overwhelming, right? So here are fun stats. These are coming from, I think with Google, Hotspot, Curata, Sam Rush, Content Marketing Institute. 41 of local businesses depend on social media to drive revenue. Who believes that? I certainly did. I come from the small business world, right? I used to manage fitness studios and uh, this was like our every single day. Managers were like, you guys have to create content. And guess what? No, nothing was created, right? Content marketing costs 62% less than traditional marketing and generates about three times as many leads. So if we know that it generates more leads and more money, then why we're not doing it, right? 53% of shoppers say that they always do research before they purchase to ensure they're making their best possible choice. Just two days ago, we ended up going to a Mexican restaurant for my wife's birthday. I was Googling the heck out of that restaurant, man. I was like, what kind of rice? Is it spicy food? I don't like spicy Mexican for some reason. That's crazy. But anyways, I'm like, do they serve me? <laughs> you know, what kind of food? So we're always like searching for that. Short form videos, TikTok, Reels, and live streaming were the most effective formats in social media in 2022. I am pretty sure we haven't found the stat in 2023, but it's on the right. And then 47% of B2B buyers consume three to five pieces of content prior to engaging with a person. In B2C consumers, this is higher. So just think about that. Pretty crazy. 84% of people expect brands to produce content. It's not a thing that we should do now. It's a thing that we actually have to do now. If, if we exist, we have to do it. Yet 81% of companies believe their content marketing efforts are not successful at all. 67% of marketers do not have a documenting content marketing strategy. Do we have a documenting content marketing strategy in this room? I see some like, oh my gosh, no, it's okay. It's okay. I, we do not have it for five years and that's okay. We need a starting point. Okay, cool. The top two reasons B2B marketers don't plan to develop a content marketing strategy are either we have a small team or we have no time. Who feels that way? I definitely did. I was like, I do not have enough time to actually go ahead and do this. So this is just some graphs at the very top of producing enough content. 64% is the top challenges. Like we, even if we don't produce, we still like, Crap. I think, by the way, Chris here, Sarah, sorry. Uh, sometimes my English is not very good looking. So I'll try to keep it under control. But producing enough content, right? It tends to be the main problem. Yep, producing it alone in general, right? Now we have to think about the video content. Is it like, is it changing to have different formats? What do we actually have to do? All these things, right? Again, we see more of uh, producing the content that engages, lack of budget, right? I don't think I have the team. I don't think I have the capacity and so on. So 
who can relate, I raise my hand. I still relate at some degree with this, right? So from one to 10, how confident do you feel about how to go from an idea, right? Your story, all these things that you have in your head that your message, right? To money, put it in the chat. I want to see it like zero, like from one to 10. I want to see the answers coming through. Five, eight, let's go. Okay, we're very confident. All right, Sarah, challenge accepted. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> awesome, and six, so kind of halfway through. Awesome, Lori, eight, awesome. Okay, so perfect, cool. Now that those five, six, eights, and sevens are gonna be like 10, just so you know, after this, it's gonna happen. Awesome, thank you guys for sharing. All right, cool. I went ahead, okay. Bam, okay, so how do we actually go to this? Quick 30 second introduction of who am I? So in 1999, this was me as a baby. I was born in 93. This is my brother and business partner, Fonsi. He was actually born that way with that long hair, crazy, right? 2015, we're out there with like smaller businesses. We're recording content for them. We're recording courses. We're helping them with their funnels, like all these fun things for small businesses. In 2017, we actually uh, founded the company legally. So for two years, we're doing this thing on the fly, freelancers, let's do this, 2017. This actually makes is a reality. In 2019, this is my brother's room at the time. We start a podcast. This was, we call it Bruce and Bros. So thank God that did not continue because we will be drunk right now. We publish three episodes a week, which is crazy. But we call that the porn set. We have the bed and the lights. And then his girlfriend just walked in and she's like, what are you guys doing? I'm like, you don't want to know. So later in 2019, I quit my job and we go to our first like mastermind. So we invest in our own education, right? In 2020, we go to PodFest as photographers for one of the speakers. And we're like, this is a great opportunity to learn feedback about podcasting, a long form content, right? And we decided to actually launch the show. Then later in 2020, COVID happened and all our businesses around town closed. That was 80% of our sales, monthly sales. And at the time, keep in mind, it was just me and my brother at the time freelancing, we had no teams. And I freak out. Those were actually pictures of my face that day that we received the call. So more later, again, my English is not very good looking. We decide to start our podcast live. So far, we've done more than 400 episodes. We're part of the Hotspot Network. So that was a day, literally, that was a day that everything changed, right? And then today we have the show in the Hotspot Podcast Network. We've collaborated with some awesome brands and we talk to awesome people like you. So quick story, awesome. So how do we actually put this into action, Luis? So remember all the stats, I know you're going to repeat it, it's very depressing, but today we have some goals, right? We have, we want to go from not successful to successful strategy. We want to have a documented system and strategy. So I hope your notebooks are ready, have a system that works even with no team and helps you save a ton of time. And then at the end of the day, we all want to make some moolah, right? Some money. All right. So the blueprints, ready? Ready? Yeah. Awesome. I see some thumbs up. Good. Cool. Am I going too fast? Can you understand me? Okay, here we go. Okay, so we're big fans of principles over tactics. We follow tactics for so, so long with no results. We were so confused. We had no idea where to start. We tried this for a couple of days and it's like, it doesn't work and so on. And it wasn't until we finally accepted <laughs> that we have to go over principles over tactics that everything started to fall. So there's two main frameworks that we've followed over the last three years. We started executing and then they started to uncover themselves as we started executing. Now they're clearer than ever, right? We went from publishing just me and my brother for 10 minutes a day to now running a very successful content team and we provide fractional content teams to other companies. So these are the two main frameworks that we utilize with every single person. So we're going to go over those right now real Let quick. So, okay. you, Luis. I have a question for Absolutely. you right out of the gate. Okay. But back to your slide when you're talking about how principles are more important than tactics. I think it's way important for us to recognize why our brains are drawn to tactics. It's because it doesn't force you. It doesn't actually force you to stand out. Tactics are reliant upon the trend of the day and are reliant upon algorithms and other people's control. And the brilliant thing about Luis is he's going to teach you how to lean in to your genius so that regardless if reels are the big thing or if podcasts are the big thing or blog are the big thing, you will not only survive, but you will continue to stay ahead, staying in that space. And we do the same thing in the attract method where we're teaching principles, actually how you plug those in every day, ebbs and flows of the market. And so keep in mind that temptation of tactics and beating the algorithm is secondary to the concepts I'll teach you. So you're in the right place. Thank you, Sarah. And uh, it'll be funny. We have parts in our story, which I'll share in a bit, but 
that we deviate from this and we try the tack, the hot tactics of the day and it just we fill up big time and that's when we go down and we're like okay let's just go back to the principles and foundations that that we were able to develop so these two hopefully today will work you if you haven't click the link put in the chat because there's a worksheet in there that we'll send as well so you don't have to like go through it like super super fast then that way you can go revisit that worksheet and do it for your own companies and, and your own teams right okay here we go for real <laughs> so the first one we call this the publishing pyramid right so we actually came up with this sarah in an interview with Catherine jones she was interviewing and she was like guys how do you see content high level right how do you guys actually see this and this is the thing that came out of our mouth that day and we were like after eight minutes we're like whoa this is very powerful and it really became the main framework that we've been sharing all of the time right so these four elements are the things that we got to understand first and then we have to execute from the bottom up so at the time keep in mind which is me i'm a realtor i think we we're trying to hire like another video a video editor externally and we're trying to figure out this thing of like how do we actually can how can we actually scale our content at the time we were doing 45 lives which is a facebook live straight for 45 days which sounds very intimidating for a lot of people but that was our way to like prime the content how can we like get unstuck from not publishing and that was our way at the very top what we did initially was we got to understand our resources sometimes we put our sites into outside publishers so right now alex Ormosi is big everywhere they're like oh my gosh like the content is genius i want to have alex Ormosi type of reels cool he's been publishing for seven years guys so we got to understand what are the resources the time the scale of which they're operating their content team they pay fifty thousand dollars a month for their content team right we got to understand that now we got to understand the capacity what's their capacity obviously a fifty thousand dollar team capacity is going to be way higher maybe that a business that have a virtual assistant or a business that even doesn't have a virtual assistant right we got to understand that and then how consistent can they be if you see grant cardone alex Ormosi, all these amazing entrepreneurs gary v they're publishing 24 7 multiple times a day they hire the volume they hire the frequency they push 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 but we got to understand that our capacity might be a little bit different at the very beginning we can build to that but it might be very different and then at the bottom is our messaging right what are our stories how are we inspiring people? How, what are the solutions that we're sharing with every single person, right? So once we understand that and we face the truth <laughs> that we're not gonna be able to execute like that, right? Then we can start building back up with our message, with our consistency, our commitment, our capacity, and then our resources. So we'll dive in into one of these. So our first message, you're one step away from finding your message, but you can't find it alone. We call this hashtag golden boulders. If you're in our show, if you listen to our show, this is great value. We even have a gong sound for it, but quality of the message over quality of the production, hundred percent. So this is what I meant when we first started, we said, okay, we understood everything. We don't have the time because we're executing and we're fulfilling for clients. What's the time that I actually can allocate to produce and publish together for us it was 10 minutes a day. That's all we had, right? And we're like, okay, based on that capacity, what's the message I'm going to share. And we decided that it was going to be a Facebook live that we're going to share a story of something that we learned today, and then we're going to apply it to our business. And it was all done in 20, in under 10 minutes, which I'll show in a bit, right? Consistency. With consistency comes opportunity. The more consistent we are, the more frequent we are, the more opportunities and eyes and conversations that we can have with people that actually interact with this, right? Out of sight, out of mind, out of business. We got to be present. So how do we actually build a system where we can be present multiple times a day or even one time a day, right? Based on our capacity, that is our commitment with 45 Live was once a day. Our commitment with Content is Profit, which is our show, is three times a week, right? So depending on what we choose to publish, what is that commitment to consistency? And nothing has broken that, not even Hispanic holidays, I promise you. It's been amazing because that's like the one thing, right? All right, capacity. So. You can do it. You can do anything once you stop trying to do everything. And that was like the last three years, previous 45 live that we tried every single tactic in the book. I promise you, we have all the books from all the marketers and we decided to try everything, right? So our perceived capacity is not our real capacity. We thought we could do way more sometimes, right? And then we overextend ourselves and then we don't end up doing anything. And then sometimes we think it's too little to actually go and take action. So those 10 minutes, of Facebook lives a day, change your life. After 15 days, we ended up having an opportunity, a six figure opportunity that came through and that's what really started the business. So I promise you, even if it's 10 minutes a day, 
there are some results that we can get there, right? And then after that, after we figure that out, it's like, how do we assign resources, right? How do we get those resources? Like, how do we make that money? And then how do we reassign it to the system so we can continue to do this? So growth is never by chance, test, then invest. So frequency comes into play. The more messages that we put out there, the more we're going to see if it resonates, it doesn't resonate. And uh, then scaling is directly correlated to the resources successfully invested in the right processes. So for us, after a few messages, right, on the Facebook Live, for example, this, by the way, happened almost four years ago now, we were able to be like, hey, here's an offer. We need five people to jump on a call with. We got 20 answers. At that time, that saved our business because we gathered so much feedback from that. But it was after publishing a ton with the podcast, same thing. Now with the podcast, each episode publishes about 20 to 30 pieces of content. So a lot of data that we can grab on the back end to see what people are resonating with and then create more based on that, right? So there's different levels to what we're doing. So any questions so far on the, on the publishing pyramid? If not, you can drop them in the chat, but the worksheet has a couple more elements and actually space for you to write these things out. All right, I'm back here in the studio. Wasn't that awesome or what? Okay, this is, again, the first 20 minutes. If you want to listen to the second one, which we actually go into the six phases of production, it'll be a little bit more advanced, but we're happy to share it. So let me know. In the DMs, you can go at Co on Instagram and send me a message. Hey, Luis, we want that second part published. We're happy to share it. For the first part here, this framework is what allowed us to un get unstuck from not publishing and moving the things forward. So pay attention to those four elements. The messaging, like how consistent can you be with that message based on your capacity or your team capacity? And then how can we connect it to getting the resources? So you can then circle back and move the machine forward. Again, we started with Facebook Lives. Now we have, we have this show that is syndicated and the content is multiplied off of it. But again, we use the same framework. So if you're struggling with any of those four areas, go ahead and revisit your own process. See what is that one thing that I can change to move the thing forward. And if you need a little bit extra help, we're always happy to help. Click the links below, connect with us, and we're happy to jump on a call and serve you and help you and see how we can move the, the needle forward. Awesome, guys. Have an amazing rest of your week. Let's go.